Electrodes pick up propagating electrical waves. If there is an electrical activation across the region of the heart, like the atria, that will be detected by the surface recording electrodes and manifest as a wave on an electrocardiogram. The wave can be up, which is positive, or down, which is negative. That will tell you if it's going towards the positive electrode, the depolarizing impulse, or away from the positive electrode. The size of the wave also tells you how much muscle mass is involved. Atria make small waves, ventricles make big waves. People with ventricular hypertrophy, which is enlarged muscle mass, often due to high blood pressure, have even bigger electrocardiogram waves. The electrocardiograms that we have all seen before come from limb leads one or two. This is a tracing of a patient showing three consecutive heartbeats. Notice that each beat has a number of waveforms. Each waveform represents a specific electrical event in the heart during the electrical activation or depolarization and repolarization process. In a single beat, the waveforms can be broken down into three main parts. Atrial depolarization by the sinoatrial node is represented in the first waveform called the P wave. The second waveform represents ventricular depolarization represented by a complex sequence of waves referred to as the QRS complex with R as the peak. Q and S may or may not be seen on some tracings, but are considered to be waves or corners on either side of R. R is always going to be the top. The third section is ventricular repolarization represented as the T wave. The atria do also repolarize, however atrial repolarization takes place during ventricular depolarization and since the ventricles have much larger muscle mass, the electrical recording is dominated by the vent ventricular event and so the atrial event's not even recorded. In addition to the three main waveforms, there are specific intervals and sections that are analyzed and noted when looking at an electrocardiogram. The sinoatrial node depolarization creates an electrical wave across both atria depolarizing the atrial cells. This process is represented on an electrocardiogram as the P wave. The flat line after the P wave is when the impulse is collected in the atrioventricular node and is being transferred to the bundle of Hiss. This impulse does not really need to travel much, so no waveform is detected. The PR interval is the time it takes us from the start of atrial depolarization to the start of ventricular depolarization, which is a little confusing since it doesn't actually go to R. The QRS complex is a whole bunch of events bundled together. In general, the depolarizing impulse as it travels through the bundle of Hiss and the right and left bundle branches is parallel to the recording electrodes in lead 2, which is shown, so the waveform will be positive. Once the impulse gets to the apex, it then moves out around and back up the ventricular free walls. The ST segment is the flat line after the QRS complex, during which time the ventricular contraction. It is important to understand that the electrical event of depolarization occurs before the mechanical event of contraction. The signal to contract is the QRS complex. The actual contraction has no electrical activity unless something goes wrong like a heart attack. Then you might see movement here. If the ST segment, which this is called, moves up or down where we move it over here and then that T wave kind of hangs off the end, that could be due to lack of oxygen to a particular area of the heart. In that event, the chest leads that are located all over the surface of the heart can be a little bit more specific and very helpful in determining where this compromised heart tissue might be located. Ventricular repolarization or electrical recovery is represented as the T wave. 
Although one would expect it to be the opposite of the QRS complex, it is far from it. The T wave is the sum of many cells throughout the ventricles rebalancing the ions that cross the membrane during depolarization, and there are many differences in the rate of this activity among ventricular cells. We'll go through four basic terms relating to electrocardiograms. The first one is called sinus rhythm. Sinus rhythm is when all is normal. The heart is paced by the sinoatrial node, all waves are present, and there's even spacing between beats. Here, bradycardia is a heart rate that is slower than 60 beats a minute. You can see the widely spaced beats indicating there is a long time between beats. Tachycardia is a heart rate that is faster than 100 beats a minute. You can see that there is very little time between beats. You can see how this may result in very limited ventricular filling and therefore low cardiac output, which may result in a person feeling lightheaded. During exercise, tachycardia is necessary. Obviously, our heart rate increases when we exercise. However, there are many other physiological adaptations that warrant the increased output and it is not pathological. Arrhythmias are by definition an irregular heartbeat. There are many variations in both atrial and ventricular arrhythmias and all must be monitored by a cardiologist and most must be treated. This is where the heart is racing and slow and it becomes very irregular and this is just one of many, many examples. It's helpful to visually compare to sinus rhythm. Here we go with bradycardia has wide gaps while tachycardia has a beat one right after the other and one example of arrhythmia, we can see varied spacing. 